Hey, let me tell you something that you might not want to hear, but you need to hear. Not because you're watching self-improvement videos means that you're self-improving. You're probably here because you believe that you're on your self-improvement journey, and I'm so hyped because I am too. But you are experiencing these problems. You might be feeling overwhelmed. Maybe you find yourself not taking action. Maybe you find yourself not staying consistent or have a hard time being disciplined. Maybe you procrastinate or you easily get distracted. Or maybe you analyze so much to the point that you are almost paralyzed. So then what you do is you go back on YouTube, you watch more self-improvement videos, and you soothe yourself that way, feeling like this time you're gonna get it right. The problem is whatever you've been watching might have been distracting you this whole time. I hate how this self-improvement world has become because I believe that most humans have that desire to self-actualize, to better themselves. I think we all have that inside of us. But the way that people are making content online is made for you to binge watch, to get addicted, and you're not actually getting better. That is not what we are doing on this channel. I don't want my channel to be a binge-worthy channel. I want my channel to actually help you improve to change your life you should not go on youtube as like a netflix series that is just another way for you to sabotage your success people will go on youtube and watch self-improvement videos to try to find the newest book that will help help them actually this is a funny joke it's not self-help anymore it's shelf help because people buy books and then just put it on their shelves without ever actually reading them people are trying to find hacks all the times trying to double their productivity trying to make studying feel like it's TikTok, trying to make hard work feel good, that is delusional. Self-improvement is hard. It's supposed to be that way. That's what gives it so much value. People have changed this whole niche of self-improvement into a new Netflix show that people just keep consuming for pleasure without actually getting better. Do not succumb to that. Do not become a victim to that. Don't be a puppet to other people's dreams. Focus on what you want to do and how you want to get better. And I'm telling you this because I have been that person. I was that person that would consume so much content, would take notes, would make a plan, and then I was stuck in analysis paralysis because everything I wanted to do just didn't feel quite right. It didn't feel like that was something that I wanted because I didn't ask myself my question. I didn't ask myself what I truly wanted. I just tried to copy what everyone else was doing. And then it was so hard to stay consistent because it was all bullshit. It's like deep down, you don't really believe that it's going to help. You can't stick up to your meditation because you don't actually believe it's going to help you improve. Why do something if you don't even believe in it? In this video, I'm gonna give you no bullshit advice on how to self-improve for free, duh, but I ask you one thing in return. I need your attention, I need you to focus, and I want you to actually apply what I tell you. Right now, grab a pen and paper or go on the notes app because you wanna start writing things down. I want you to answer this question. Why do you want to self-improve? If you don't have a reason why, you're never going to actually stick up to any plan you set for yourself or any goals you have for yourself. You have to find your why, your why you do something. Maybe you want a better physique because you wanna feel more confident, you wanna get more dudes or girls or just feel more attractive in general. Maybe you wanna be healthy, maybe you wanna make more money. Maybe you want to feel smarter. What is the reason why you want to improve? If you don't know your why, you're never going to sustain momentum. Initially, when I really truly started my self-improvement journey, I would say it hit me in 2019. It's because I wanted to find my passion. I wasn't in school anymore and I had way more free time. I was working full time as a pro athlete, but I wanted to know what was my passion, like outside of sports, who I was. And I know you might think it's weird to think that I'm a pro athlete and that I needed to find my passion. Is it my passion being an athlete? Not quite. Playing soccer feels like a job to me. It's my duty, it's my responsibility, it's my uh, talent, it's my opp opportunity right now that I'm really owning, but it doesn't feel like a passion. I feel like I'm meant for something bigger. I felt that, so I had to go out and find my passion. I had to get out of my comfort zone. And it wasn't only with a little bit of time that it became evident that a passion was not something that was found, it was something that was built. I had to build my passion. And I built my passion by self-improving, by asking questions, by sticking up to schedules and figuring out skills and reading different books and trying different things. 
That's how I figured out my passion. And you might be wondering, what is that passion? I am passionate. I am deeply passionate about entrepreneurship. I love learning anything business. It fires me up. I don't know if it's the competitive side in me or if it's the game of business, but anything related to business, I fucking love. Business is freedom to me. I am so attracted to that. Everything about it, the good, the bad, the ugly, bring it to me. I am so excited about entrepreneurship. So now every day I wake up and everything I think about is how can I become a better entrepreneur? Right now I'm a wantrepreneur because I don't have a business. It's something that I want, but I'm building my skills. I'm building my personal brand right now. Why do you think I come on YouTube? Because I want to build a platform and try to find people that I can actually eventually partner with. If I share my gifts of self-improvement and you actually self-improve, that brings me closer to my dream. That brings me closer to finding the people that I want to partner with, that I want to create something bigger. I'm not going to do this by myself. I know that. But I'm not just going to sit, sit around and wait for them to come to me. I have to go out there and manifest that life for myself. So let's go back to that question. What is your why? Why are you doing the self-improvement in the first place? And I want you to start thinking about the word self-improvement. Self-improvement is basically improving yourself. If you're improving yourself, that means that you are changing. And the change is positive because improvement literally means to become better. But what people fail to realize is that if you do not put the effort into that change, if you do not take control over how you change, you will become worse. People think that if you don't put effort into the change, if you don't do anything that you will stay the same, but that is not true. You either evolve or you regress because that is just the law of the universe, the law of entropy. Everything is made to disaster. Everything is made around us to go towards chaos, towards disorder. So that is your natural state is always regressing. If you don't put actual effort and focus and concentrate on bettering yourself, you're not going to get better. You're just going to get worse. That is also why in religion, we talk about the law of impermanence, where the only constant is in life. Fuck, I butchered that. The only constant in life is change. You are meant to change all the time. So whatever your life experience, you either consciously learn to adapt to it or you will subconsciously adapt in a negative way. It is hard to change because in my life right now, I am very comfortable. Technically, I'm very comfortable because I have a good high status job. I'm a professional athlete. I get good pay. I have a fulfilling job. I inspire kids. I travel a lot. I'm surrounded by high performance people. Everything about my life seems luxurious. Plus, I am healthy. I literally move my body for a living. Some people think I could not ask for better. So what pushes me to change? I have to create that dissatisfaction. I have to tap into some sort of dissatisfaction that makes me want to change and to consciously self-improve because it would be so easy to do nothing. It would be so easy to stay comfortable, but I know that will make me worse because life keeps happening to you. The way I was able to create this level of dissatisfaction about my life is thinking about who I would become when I retire because I had a glimpse about retirement once I got injured in 2019 and in 2021, but in 2019 specifically, I had such a big, severe injury that it almost actually made me retire. I was out for over a year. Over a year, my knee would not recover. My knee was so shattered that it was taking forever that I thought I could never play again. And at that point, I had an identity crisis. I had no self-worth. I didn't know what I was meant to do in this world if I wasn't going to be a pro athlete. So that was a huge wake up call that I needed to build my self-worth, my value, who I was as a human being beyond my sport, beyond my role and my title. There is no better way to increase your self-worth by investing in yourself, by improving yourself. Because no matter what job I have, no matter where I go, no matter where I live, no matter who I interact with, I am the only person that will be with myself. I will always have myself. So might as well invest in myself. Invest in my IQ, in my EQ, in my skills, in my knowledge, my wisdom. So I committed. I committed to refining my qualities, to improve my weaknesses, to build new skills, to expand my knowledge. I literally committed 
to bettering myself because I knew that if I didn't do that and I would retire, I would go down a deep, dark end. I had a glimpse of what it was like to lose that sense of identity, of not knowing who I was anymore, and that was fucking scary. So I was like, I cannot lose myself anymore. I need to know who I am, and more importantly, build to who I want to become. Every day, I am building myself to become that entrepreneur that I want to be. I committed to that growth because I knew that that was the only way that I could actually feel fulfilled in life. And you will know, you will know when you will change because you will start seeing yourself acting differently, reacting differently, especially that one, uh, think differently, behave differently. You will see that over time, but right now you might have not even seen that because you think you're on self-improvement, but you always go back to videos or doing things that are meaningless because you're not even connected to why you want to do it. You have to stop consuming so much content and really focusing on actually applying what's being taught out there. It's not like every video is bullshit. I'm saying that the way that you treat yourself watching those videos is bullshit. The way that you handle the information is not adequate. So if you're ready to change because you're deeply connected to your why, there's two ways that you can actually change. It's either by thought or by behavior. But Personally, I prefer behavior because when you do things and you take action, it's like your body can sense that you're giving proof that you are different. You could do it the other way around and just think like, okay, I'm committing to this. I'm going to be this type of person. You can visualize yourself being a certain way. You can write down like commitments you have for yourself, promises you have for yourself. But it's so much harder to change from thoughts alone. I think it's so much easier to just Put your feelings aside, put your thoughts aside, and just focus on doing the action no matter how you feel. That way, when you do the thing, you're giving undeniable proof that you are changing, that you are a different person, and your thoughts will change based off of what you're doing. Now the next question is, how can you sustain that behavior? How can you keep that momentum going? How can you keep taking action and keep reminding yourself of why you're self-improving? The worst mistake that you could do is to focus on too many things at once. You need to have tunnel vision. You need to literally focus on one thing. The reason why I became the person I am today is because I had chapters of my life where I just literally focused on one thing. For a long time, I only focused on soccer. And then when I went to college, I prioritized school. And when I prioritized school, it's not like my soccer went to shit. I just knew soccer was just part of who I was. It wasn't even an effort to actually train hard because it was just part of my identity. But being a good scholar, that was different for me. So I had to do things differently. I had to study more. I had to have tutors. I had to rewatch the presentations from the teacher. I had to go to office hours. I had to do things much differently if I wanted to change my identity and become a, a scholar. But then when I committed to that period of my life and then I graduated and I succeeded at school, then it was time for a new chapter. And I went all in on my self-improvement. I went all in with meditation, learning about my spirituality and religion, learning about the feminine and masculine energy, building my skills, uh, learning about mindset. That was huge for me. I did all these little things, uh, doing therapy, journaling. I can't, I mean, the list goes on. I've done that for years. And then that was the chapter of my life where I self-improved. But now I was ready to put myself out there. Now I'm in this new chapter where I'm building my personal brand because I have a new vision. I'm committing to becoming an entrepreneur. So now I'm all in into this personal branding. I'm all in into giving value, giving stuff for free because I want to become a better speaker. I want to be more influential and impactful because this is the new chapter of my life. I'm not trying to fix tons of different things in my life. I am focusing on one thing. If you watch my video about focus, you'll understand that you cannot multitask. That is just completely inefficient. It's a myth and you're just ruining your success. Do not multitask. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to tell you this. Just focus on one thing. And the thing is, the world will reward you for being exceptional. If you're being average at multiple different things, you're not going to be rewarded because you're just going to be mediocre at everything. If you become exceptional at one thing, everything and the other areas of your life will elevate, but you will be the best at one thing and the world will reward you for exceptionality. If you want to see the most improvements in your life, you need to have an unbalanced life. You need to go all in and become obsessed because a lot of people think that a balanced life is to have things 
spread out thin in different buckets. But a balanced life is having literally chapters of your life where you commit to one thing. And then eventually, if you look at your whole year, it will balance out because you will have different chapters where you completely focused on one area of your life. So you have to pick that for yourself, what it is about your life right now that you want to go all in. And if you don't know what that is, you have to ask yourself, what deeply pains you? What pains you the most in your life right now? What is the one thing that you absolutely want to change? Because if you can connect to that emotional feeling, that will make you go forward. Just like me, when I was so scared of who I was, if I wasn't an athlete, and I was so scared of what I do when I'd retire, that's what brought me forward because it was so scary to think that I would be worthless and they will stick. If you come in and you go all in, in that area, it will stick because for example, a couple months ago, I mean more like last year, I was really, really into fasting, like obsessed with fasting. I went all in, I would create these 24 hour fast, 36 hour fast. And I would just try different, uh, types of diets during my fast. It was absolutely insane. I have learned so much by putting my whole focus into that. And right now to this day, I know how to do fasting, but I don't even have to think about it. It's ingrained in me. I know how to deal with it because I went all in and now it's just part of who I am. I don't have to think about it so much. So whatever skill or thing about yourself that you're trying to improve, just go all in into that. And eventually it will become part of who you are. And then eventually it will become second nature. You won't even have to put any and like any effort to sustain it because it will just feel so natural to you. Kind of like working out my whole life. I've been told what to do to work out. Cause I'm an athlete. I had a trainer that would tell me to warm up, which is the worst part of working out in my opinion. When I had to start going to the gym by myself in off season, initially it was really hard because I had to hold myself accountable. No one was telling me to go. It was so, so difficult to get myself to go to the gym, but I took my plan seriously. I made myself a schedule that I would respect. I showed up every single day and now it's so much easier to go to the gym and go for a run or lift. I actually get excited because I know how I I will feel afterwards and I just need to go over that hump at the beginning. But it's so much easier for me to just go to the gym. I used to dread it so much but it's just a habit. Now it's ingrained in me. It's just part of who I am. Yeah, I go to the gym on my own. That's just who I am. All of that because I had a period of my life where I just went all in. And just so you know, no matter what you're gonna try to improve at, you're always going to have some sort of friction at the beginning. Whenever you're trying to focus on anything or you're trying to get yourself to do anything, there will always be a moment of agitation at the beginning. I just did a meditation earlier. It felt like, felt like shit but it's only for the first two minutes where I'm trying to calm myself down, where I'm trying to quiet my thoughts. It's literally just the beginning. And then eventually you get into that state of deep relaxation, of deep focus on your breath, and you actually feel that you are doing the meditation. But initially it just feels so uncomfortable. You just want to move, you you like overthink, maybe you focus on your, on your heartbeat too much and you just feel like uneasy, but eventually it passes. It does that every single time. And I've been meditating for, I don't know how many years. You will always feel a feeling of agitation every time you try to focus. So don't get discouraged if you try something new and you feel that feeling. And now there's just one last step because the first two is knowing your why, like knowing why you want to self-improve. Then the second thing is to have pure tunnel vision on one thing that you want to improve right now, one aspect of your life. And then thirdly, it's literally fucking self-discipline. You know that and everyone wants to chase that feeling of, oh, how can I make self-discipline easy? It's never going to feel easy. Self-discipline always has a level of it being hard, always. It's supposed to be hard because that is what gives value. What self-discipline gives you is delaying gratification and whatever is at the end, the reward is so worth it because it was hard. If it was easy, it wouldn't feel worth it. So stop trying to find the easy way out. You're going to have to be self-disciplined. The good thing though, is that eventually it will just become part of who you are. Cause right now you might not identify as someone that is self-disciplined. So it's hard for you to do something, but someone like me that views themselves as someone that is self-disciplined, it's just part of who I am. I do things out of discipline, but I'm like, that's just who I am. So I do it. It's not as hard, but it still has that friction. It's still difficult to not do what I want to do. For example, today 
I wanted to read all day. I have a fiction book right now. I'm like into reading fiction right now. And I just wanted to read all day. Today's my off day. I could be doing whatever the fuck I want. But no, I'm building my personal brand, baby. And I'm going live in like 20 minutes. I might be seeing you there. But I wanted to read all day. I have to set rules for myself. I had to set rules that literally like the military where you can only do it at this point. If not, there's a consequence. I can only read fiction as of 9 p.m. up until 10 p.m. That's just a rule I have to do for myself because if not, I will want to do it all day. Reading fiction could be the same thing as people playing video games or watching TV or drinking alcohol. You need to set rules for yourself. If you want to keep yourself at a high standard, you need to set rules like you're in the military. And all you have to do is follow through what you say. When you put a commitment, when you tell yourself a promise, you need to follow through. That's how you build that confidence. And that's what makes you keep believing that you're self-disciplined because you're giving yourself that proof. There is no other way around it. You cannot fake that. Here's a little secret about how I keep going with self-discipline. When it feels hard, which is very often, but when it feels hard, I fucking smile because I know that most people also feel like it feels hard when I do what I'm about to do and they quit. Most people quit. And that's why I know that if I do the thing, I'm one step closer to reaching my dreams. I'm one step closer to being successful in my own eyes. I'm one step closer to feeling fulfilled. Isn't that what you want to feel? So when things feel hard, embrace that embrace the suck and just know that most people will quit but don't be a quitter because you want more for yourself right now i had about 50 minutes to kind of jot down my ideas and film a video before i go live and i did not want to do this heck i don't even know if i want to do the live it stresses me out or it just feels uncomfortable it feels like work why am i doing that in my 20s i could be doing so many other things i could be partying i could be meeting up with dudes and girls and i could be like smoking weed i could be i don't know there are so many things i could be doing in my 20s yet look at me on my off day i'm literally filming this youtube video i'm going live i'm creating this challenge because i want a better future for myself because i have dreams to chase because i am taking my potential seriously so i just want you to start thinking about yourself start thinking about what you want and just believe that you can get it And it's by respecting what you desire, being aware of what pains you and what you want to fix, and then committing to that. I hope my video was something that was helpful to you. And if you're interested in getting started into your self-improvement journey, I have a challenge starting July 1st. A bunch of us are going to do this self-improvement challenge where we do six habits for a whole month because that is going to be a perfect way to start building momentum. So if you want to be a part of this, just put your email in the link in the description below. Besides that, thank you so much for watching until the end, but you need to thank yourself because you should be proud of yourself to have that attention span to listen to the end. So love you so much, and I will see you very, very soon in a new video. Mwah.